how's this for some buddies on a Sunday night? None other than our dear friends James Ashby is running for the seat of Keppel for One Nation in the upcoming Queensland election. Go, boy, go! And running, of course, for the seat of uh, Boothby. Double uh, her uh, Israeli flag pins this evening is none other than the wonderful Nicole Flint. You're all in, mate. How are you? I'm very well. I thought we should just acknowledge the... Wonderful news that four hostages have been rescued, which is quite incredible after such a period of time. Bloody oath. Bloody oath. All right, let's talk about uh, the apparent change of the Coalition's position when it comes to the Paris Agreement. Um, James, I'll start with you. Um, again, I'm going to wait and see. I don't want, I'm not going to rely on the Greens' interpretation of a couple of lines in an interview. I'm going to wait for whatever an announcement might be. I think that many people watching right now would say, yeah, tear the damn thing up. But what do you think the political consequence of it is? Well, Peter Dutton's got the right approach here. Uh, finally, I can actually say I can see something that Peter Dutton stands for. He's taken a, a very strong and principled approach here. We know that we're not going to meet these targets that have been set by his predecessors of the past. Both uh, Scott Morrison, Turnbull and Abbott have all played a role in, of course, signing us up to the, the Paris Agreement. The problem that a lot of people at home probably don't realise, every country's Paris Agreement is different. Mm. So Australia's is completely different in New Zealand, it's completely different to Canada and every other country across the globe. So we've signed up one of the worst. What I wish that Peter Dutton would come out and say in the, the next few days is he's just completely out of the UN altogether, let alone just the Paris Agreement. So, look, it's a great first move. I think he's on the right path. Uh, he may not have said those words exactly, but I think he's uh, certainly uh, singing the right sound uh, and and I can certainly back that. One Nation can certainly back it. Yeah, N Nicole, I mentioned you and Boothby as one of the ten seats that are the most vulnerable for Labor right now. Um, would getting out of the Paris Accord help or hurt when you are talking to the people that you need to change their mind to go back to the Liberal Party after they went to the Labor Party at the last one? Well, the question here is actually how on earth are Labor planning to meet their target? Because Chris Bowen really can't tell us which industries are going to suffer. Is he going to inflict more pain on farmers? Is he going to shut down manufacturing? Is he going to stop exporting coal to China? We've just seen some, something like record exports of coal to China, which support 25,000 jobs in New South Wales alone. Uh, we've seen recently Labor come out and say, oh, look, no, we, we acknowledge that actually we're going to need gas into the future if we want to guarantee baseload power supplies. So the people who have the most questions to answer here are the Labor Party, uh, the Coalition and Peter Dutton and Ted O'Brien, to their great credit, have said we need to have a very serious conversation about nuclear because... If we want to meet our 2050 targets, then nuclear has to be part of that solution to getting to net zero by 2050. So I think what we're seeing are very responsible and very honest uh, statements from Peter Dutton, as opposed to the uh, creative fantasies that we keep hearing from people like Chris Bowen as to how they think that they are going to get to these targets by 2030. See, I'm with you about how there are big questions about how we get 25, 26, 27. Those three years, which would be the three that are up for debate at the next federal election, how they are going to supercharge. Now, for want of a better thing, the easy options have all been taken, right? But, of course, uh, emissions aren't just about the electricity grid. It's about everything from transport to you name it, right? Agriculture. And this government would clearly start to supercharge after that next election. Um, now, obviously, James, this is a thing that people in the suburbs... Again, I don't know how... We'll all wait and see how this debate runs and who ends up winning and whether the, 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 the you know, the cost of, insert change, will be enough for people to, to change their minds. But... Labor people were saying today that they basically believe, you know, this thing is settled policy, game over. Once you fiddle with this, uh, uh, you know, it's like um, trying to cancel a school day or something. It's, it's, it's some sort of great change that the Australian people will not accept. Why would you disagree with their, uh, their spin? Well, Peter Dutton has more than just the Labor Party to contend with. He's also got his state counterparts. And 
Here in Queensland, David Christofulli, who's the state leader of the LNP here, right. uh, backed Labor legislation to lock in net zero by 2050 and we're still by 2035 uh, not carbon emissions down by 75%. Now, that's been legislated by someone within his own state Liberal National Party. So Peter's not only got challenges from the opposition and, and the Greens when he returns to the uh, lower house, but he's also got those problems within his own state. David Christofoli doesn't support nuclear here for Queensland. Again, another challenge that Peter Dutton's got to face. So he's going to have a bit of competition here from those within his own ranks. But I say to Peter, Put on a brave face, have the argument with your own people and have it with the rest of the country here mm. because we can't continue paying $300,000 in compensation to farmers per kilometre for these new high transmission mm. uh, cables that have got to go, go across farms. Can't happen. I'm so with you. So with you.